Good evening, my name is Katarzyna Nowicka and welcome to Poland Daily News. The six years long term of office of the first president of the Supreme Court, Małgorzata Gersdorf, ended today. President Andrzej Duda appointed Supreme Court Judge Kamil Zaradkiewicz to temporarily perform the duties of the first president of this institution. He is now to convene the General Assembly of Supreme Court Judges to select five candidates, among which the president will choose the successor of Gersdorf. However, according to Gersdorf, this decision has no legal basis. Polish President Andrzej Duda appointed Judge Kamil Zaradkiewicz to perform duties of the first president of the Supreme Court until the General Assembly of Supreme Judges is convened. The nomination is invalid. This decision was made in order to hold presidential elections. I'm leaving the Supreme Court in the hands of its judges, in good hands. I'm surprised that Ms. Gersdorf did not express her appreciation for President Duda's decision. The president fulfilled his duties and his decision has a legal basis. It is the obligation of Judge Zaradkiewicz to convene the General Assembly of Supreme Court judges in order to appoint the new first president of the Supreme Court. I hope that it is going to happen very soon. What exactly is going to happen? I hope that five candidates will be selected by the judges in accordance with the bill. The president of Poland will make the final decision. I want to meet the candidates first and then I will make my decision. The date of the Polish presidential elections will likely be decided next week. In the meantime, logistic preparations for absentee ballot elections are underway, in which the Polish Postal Service is to play a key role. Despite the opposition's demands for the government to declare a state of natural disaster in connection with the coronavirus pandemic, the ruling Law and Justice Party demands the presidential elections be held according to the date based on the Polish constitution, in the form of 100% absentee ballot vote, by means of the Polish Postal Service. The bill regulating this form of elections is now being debated by the Senate and is to return to the same momentarily. I am absolutely convinced that the Polish Postal Service, an experienced trading company which delivers hundreds of millions of pieces of mail to all households in Poland each month, is going to rise to the occasion and meet the demands of mail delivery in connection with the upcoming elections. I know it because I used to be a member of the governing board of that company and I am familiar with the high level of professionalism of our postal workers. I am certain that those elections are going to be safe, as the absentee ballot elections are the most safe in the time of the global pandemic we are now faced with. We must keep in mind that the Polish constitution requires that the elections for the new president of Poland be held on or before May 23rd of 2020. According to the statement by Law and Justice spokesman Jarosław Fogiel, we are faced with two choices, either conduct the absentee ballot elections on May 10, 2020, or meet on the same day by ballot boxes. According to the government, the form of absentee ballot election is the safest form for polls and at the same time will allow to maintain the constitutional order in the country. Didier Reinders, the EU Justice Commissioner, seems to have envied Franz Timmermans, who specialized in attacking the Polish government for several years. Reinders was to follow in his footsteps. The Belgian Commissioner seems to be determined to stop the presidential elections in Poland, which are planned to take place on May 10th. In the opinion of the EU Commissioner, changes to the electoral code made by the Law and Justice Party and using the Polish Post to conduct the presidential elections is raising a lot of concerns. Didier Reinders also stressed that the Venice Commission does not recommend to introduce any changes to the electoral code a year before the elections. The way the Polish Post requested data which was required to prepare the election cards from the municipalities raised questions as well, although he admitted the case of the presidential elections in Poland does not violate Article Article 7 of the EU treaty regarding the rule of law. The German economy has taken a turn for the worse, as unemployment rates in April continue to grow due to the global coronavirus outbreak. Monthly retail sales declined last month at their fastest rate in 13 years. The country is now bracing for its deepest recession since World War II. Although a gradual easing of the coronavirus lockdown is taking place, many shops, businesses and factories have remained shut. 
The head of the labor office, Detlef Shala, said he expected to use reserves of about 26 billion euros this year for a short-time work scheme to help employers and employees, adding that because the scheme was working, redundancies would not be widespread. The unemployment rate increased by 308,000 to 2.6 millions in the reported month. Therefore, we stand at 5.8 percent now. This is still a percentage, which is still good compared to other years, but the increase in April is totally unusual. It has never happened before and cannot be explained by the changing seasons. This is solely related to Corona. There is no getting around it. Germany is in the biggest recession since its founding in 1949. It's worse than ever and more comprehensive than ever. This is really something no one who has worked at the labor office has ever experienced. It all comes together. Unemployment is increasing. Short-time work is increasing exponentially up to unforeseen levels, while the labor market collapses and the number of new jobs goes down. Taking all of this into account, it leads to the labor market basically being disrupted. The number of people out of work in Germany saw a record increase in April, rising by 373,000 to over 2.6 million, according to data from the German Labor Office. That took the unemployment rate to 5.8% from a seasonally adjusted 5% a month earlier. Some 751,000 requests for short-time work for a total of 10.1 million people were made in March and until April 26, though not all of those will end up on the short-time work scheme. In the first scenario, our reserve funds would be sufficient. In the second scenario, our reserves would not be enough, and we would have to draw between 4 and 5 billion euros from the state resources this year. Short-time work is a form of state aid that allows employers to switch employees to shorter working hours during an economic downturn to keep them on the payroll. It remains to be seen whether the efforts will be enough to stop widespread layoffs in the coming weeks. That's all for tonight. Now on to Poland Daily Business with Aleksander Wierzejski and his guest. Good night.